we discussed. Uh, please go ahead. So basically, the first skill evolution we'll be discussing is Dead Dead Fives skill specific evolution for Fortune Dealer from an untranslated name that probably means Black and White Dealer, which is related to his actual character and this actually reflect this skill evolution actually reflects his character a lot more than his kit previously previously used to. So basically, what 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 this does this skill evolution does is it increases the blessing uh skill activation rate from 40 percent to 45 percent base uh and from from adjacent to one square all around him which is actually a pretty significant buff but that's that's honestly just <laughs> that that's honestly the <laughs> probably the most underwhelming of the the three ones he got uh the other thing he got was um a phase start movement expansion buff which is actually unique uh, in this timing. Usually we have movement expansion buffs tied to charge skills or or when appearing uh, triggers, but right here on phase start is actually more easily accessible and more easily refreshable. So it's actually pretty good, uh, a pretty good buff is, that's going to complement his on, on movement skills and allow to repositioning to position units better and uh the third the third thing he got which is probably the <laughs> the giant wall of text that appears on the wiki but it, that looks really complicated but it really isn't it's uh it's basically that now he he, he shifts between dealing fixed damage a every turn and healing damage every time he moves so basically in turn turns one three five seven etc he he's going to deal uh, 8,000 damage, uh, flat damage, to the units in front of him in long slash range and magic range combined. Basically, it's sort of like a pyramid. And on the turns two, four, six, eight, etc., he's going to heal 1,000 damage to units in that pyramid range, uh, allies. That is, he, he's not he's not going to heal <laughs> enemies, of, of course. That this only happens if he's he happens to be below the party, of course, and uh, a pyramid range below him on the, the left and right. Well, Basically, just... like a, a diamond, oh. a diamond shaped range. Why should you describe as a diamond to begin with? <laughs> because it it might it it might be it might be harder to understand uh, the the diamond thing that it's actually. Just think of like, you know, think of like a diamond. So like you know, the vertices are at the top and I mean, the sides, it, but it, 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 the radius is like three it, squares it, on, from up and left and right and down. It could be like that, but but basically, uh, uh, you you can already make sort of a diamond with just two squares. In that case, that is. But this one is actually three squares. Uh, yeah, just think of your like ruler spread, except uh, one square larger, I suppose. Uh, so <laughs> the energy. Uh, this is not. I had. I had. Uh, you want me to continue? Yes, well, please. I feel some more stuff to say. Basically, this is probably the easiest access flat damage to for the first turn, which is on on movement. Uh, uh, it has no drawbacks other than you need to move the unit. Uh, basically, it, it isn't on an after attacking trigger, which can potentially trigger. Uh, other skills from other units, and it actually allows dead and other units to take advantage of this and and uh, deal damage on top of that flat damage because flat damage usually cannot kill, so it's actually really good. This this timing for flat damage is really good because it uh, it it will always go before your units attack, regardless of order. Yeah, so it's a bit and uh, not quite, because Corpoker only has like 1,000 1, damage every turn, and uh, the the other access to flat damage is after attacking, so it can't actually... It That, that after attacking is... Not is part of the damage. lethal hit, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's not going to, to help make the, the hit lethal. And this is why Dead is actually really, really good for dungeons now, on top of having that... Uh, mentor bonus he also he also has a, a really nice range to to deal with with the the low damage 
the low health enemies that are in dungeons and he can actually uh, almost completely <laughs> uh, de delete their HP just by moving and then he can deal the finishing blow uh, on the attacking turn it's, uh, and, also, and also heal in between turns to help mitigate the damage taken every phase. Uh, yeah, he would be perfect for dungeons if looking at his kit uh, we have negative 8,000 HP, uh, so that doesn't seem like much for our most challenged quests. It would only be useful for weaker enemies, but that's kind of the perfect uh, sort of match for dungeons, uh, where it's just with a whole bunch of weaker enemies that can be easily taken. That was, you know, un l losing 8,000 HP plus dead spinal hit. And uh, the HP also doesn't seem like much, uh, like 1,000 HP every two turns is kind of like it's okay, but. Uh, for like quicker games, not so much, but for longer games where the phases are lengthier, uh, it would be much more relevant. And that's actually, yet again, the perfect example for where uh, he would thrive in dungeons. And because he's always moving, he actually gets more mileage out of Blessing as well as uh, Regeneration. And also Glint from his uh, uh, his uh, mentor ability. Uh, and as a result, I would recommend uh, bringing units that could sort of complement his healing playstyle. Uh, so that yeah, uh, healing is more effective if you have, if you can reduce damage overall. So either units that can inflict d damage debuffs or uh, bestow uh, defense buffs, and the ones I would be recommending personally uh, include Arachne and Treaton and Ose and Daikaku. A Treaton for protection, Arachne for curse, Ose for dazzle, and Daikaku also for, for protection. And uh, yeah. That movement, of course, at every phase start is very useful to deal not just with randomness from battle start, but also just uh, the randomness in general from every phase start within dungeons. So he's really perfectly uh, primed to be your go-to uh, su su support mentor t to take into dungeons, uh, as opposed to Triton, for example, who's who's also probably the most more popular pick. Uh, any comments on that, Zalgus? <laughs> no, not really. I don't have any comments on this character, but um, I was thinking about how on a giant enemy he can inflict upwards of uh, 56,000 damage, which is neat. Uh, and all he would need to do is move for that. Uh, so that could be useful. Although if you could do it flat damage strats on a giant enemy, it might still be better to bring Corbin there, or maybe you could bring both. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that, that's something I forgot to say. That <laughs> flat damage meta, it's here. It might happen. <laughs> I, I, I'm counting on it. It's like a lo basically the best way that uh, the enemy can counter, like the the, the player themselves. It seems to be uh, flat HP reduction because generally you can just blow them up otherwise, but uh, and or stack defense buffs or even use evasion, but. The player has there's never been a way true way to counter flat HP stuff, so I'd I'd, I'd be welcome to that sort of change in gameplay. Yeah, we've been having a lot of flat damage units actually. We got chorus, we got we got uh, soul, and now we got dead. And I, I hope this becomes a thing. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. Uh, anyways, that concludes our thoughts for dead, and hopefully we can salvage some of this from the pre previous stream, but. Well, we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, the next units we discussed will be Moritaka and his uh, skull illusion floor. Read the comments. Don't break my heart, Zalgus. <laughs> Don't break my heart. <laughs> 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 you can't the comments. Uh, it's like I feel like there's a hammer being like rung against my empty metal heart, and just, uh, <laughs> okay, tin man. Uh, all right. Oh, by the way, uh, did you notice on your OBS uh, at a few points it was saying encoding overloaded at the bottom? It's not saying it right now, but... Uh, that's an issue that I made sure it wasn't really happening. I mean, it didn't beat me when I was checking it. Uh, I did notice that before during my Desert Journey streams, which is why I made a big deal about trying to get like a new way to directly connect by wire to my internet connection. But I, I'm not sure if that's really the issue in this case, because, I mean... We saw ourselves that our sound is fine in the video that we provided. Uh, I don't understand how technology works. Are you gonna cut parts of this out? Uh, I'll just figure it out, yeah. 
since we have the we have the leisure of recording, uh, since we are forced into it, might as well, we might as well take advantage of what we can with it. No, uh, <laughs> no yelling this time. <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Please. So let's talk about Moritaka. So originally he was uh, one of the uh, worst four-star units, and then he got Samurai Warrior Plus, which was a buff that made him a bit better, uh, but still kind of bad because uh, it had terrible rates of only 70%, even though his attack up rate went better. Um, then he got uh, Samurai Warrior Plus, which was a skill evolution that is really not that great, mostly because of the terrible proc rate of 70% on it. Um, of the uh, interesting part of it anyway. And then he, and now he has a, a new skill evolution finally for Spiritual Dog Warrior, which the rest of the Hakenji also got, besides Tanatomo. Um, and it, the bloody thing hasn't been translated, but uh, I think it says something about uh, filial piety, because I can, I can see that character there. Um, so uh, it's a pretty neat uh, skill evolution. Um, so they made the blessing rate actually reliable. It used to be 16 or 32 percent, which is a, a complete joke, um, especially for something like a mere blessing uh, on its own. So now that's at a uh, fairly reliable rate of 80 percent, and uh, it applies to the um, you know, it applies to allies to the left and right of him and to self. So he gives himself a bit of sustain, and um, he focuses a lot on buffing his the allies beside him. Uh, but the uh, real interesting part of the uh, skill evolution is that he, uh, when he moves, he freezes a slash range in front of him. Now, uh, freeze is an extremely rare debuff. Um, there are only, uh, there are only, including Moritaka. There are now only four units who can inflict freeze. Uh, Korapaka, uh, Kamui, and Chernobog, all of their uh, regular forms can inflict freeze, uh, and some of their variants. Or, um, do you remember if Chernobog, some of Chernobog inflicts freeze? He uh, does. Yes, he does. Yes. yes. Yes, okay, so all those units inflict freeze. Um, but uh, besides Kamui's CS, uh, all of his CSs inflict free, so that's a hundred percent rate. But uh, we'll have a terrible power because SA level. Moritaka has the uh, highest freeze rate in the entire game. Um, it's at ninety percent rate, which is actually pretty ridiculous for. Yeah, the previous you know, highest uh, was eighty percent. So uh, yeah, from Chernobog punching someone or slashing someone. Um, now, <laughs> I say that you know it's amazing, but. Uh, while freeze is nice because it's such a rare buff, so you know, stack with everything else. I don't know if I would uh, include him alone forever. Um, I'll get onto that. So, um, so having freeze gives him the ability to support his team by, like, offensively, by uh, having a debuff on an enemy is essentially a buff for his entire team since they all benefit from the damage up. Um, the range. It leaves a bit to be desired because slash range, but um, still having slash range is nice enough since you know it can affect three people at once. Um, unfortunately, this doesn't really do much for his damage because uh, Rotaka's uh, base attack is actually still really low. So, um, on an enemy with freeze, he will deal a 3887 damage, which is not really that great, um, but being such a reliable source of freeze could be useful. Um, the next part of his uh, skill evolution is remove debuff. Uh, so when he attacks, he will remove debuffs from himself and allies to the left and right, again going with the uh, rest of his kit, which focuses on buffing himself and the allies beside him. The rate is unfortunately pretty low, but uh, it's standard rates for remove debuff besides stuff like uh, face start or move. So on attack, it's pretty much around about correct. Um, most units that have removed debuff have similar rates, like uh, Lave has like 30% or something like that, which is garbage, but... Yeah, this is just a standard neat addition, but it's he's not exactly the, the leader for uh, units that exemplify this effect. But it's so nice though. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's something that goes with the rest of his kill, supporting self and allies to the left and right. Um, and the last part of his skill evolution is kind of whatever, but um, when he attacks, he gains health and CP. Um, a pretty good rate. I don't know why the CP is 45%, but, you know, skill uh, skill seed bait, as you usual. Yeah. Uh, so, now, so, combined with his Samurai Warrior Plus, which gives protection to allies on, on left and right, and attack up to himself when he takes damage, he's kind of now like this, uh, he's a support who can uh, go in the middle and uh, give a lot of support to the people left and right of him. He, yeah, he he's himself just is somewhat tanky. He's uh, just continuing his existing role as a, a frontline front support, I guess. Basically, like, yeah. Uh, this yeah, ideal formation is being at front and also having it in front beside him. Uh, so yeah, this just enhances that basically. Um, yeah, yeah. He, um, he is decently tanky if he procs his blessing and he's moving constantly because he has tenacity to self so, and uh, healing on here, so kind of like Shino, um, regular Shino. The he only issue not, I have with it is just... a flattering comparison. The only issue I have with it is like his... His charge skill isn't really that interesting. It's like remove buff or something. And I guess the only reason you'd want to build up your charge is just for the extra bit of damage. Uh, I think, yeah. I think my issue with this unit is that it it seems to do a lot of things, but <laughs> it's not really it, that great at any of them. It's not. Yeah, exactly. It's not really good at doing any of them. <laughs> Yeah. If his if his samurai warrior plus wasn't seventy percent rate on the protection, it would be better because you know then because you, you know everyone remembers Valentine Shino and how his tenacity to left and right and self was pretty strong. But yeah, Moritaka cannot do that. Why isn't it hundred percent rate? Is it's it, so stupid. Is it on move? What uh, yeah, it's is on protection? Move. Yeah, it's on move. Yeah. It's on move. Uh, yeah, so, so Moritaka is very much a move slot. Yeah, he's incentivized even though know, like. Well, actually, it's a, kind of a decent sense of, you know, protection is kind of ass in terms of the rate. But the issue with that is, well, because it's on move, one of them is, like, freeze, and that means... Uh, uh, someone mentioned on the server that attaching the Hogan Toji card would work, but I, I would disagree because even if he pulls them in, the units he pulls them won't be frozen. So I would say, uh, instead of that, bring units that will be beside him that can pull units in a turn start. So either Dagon or any of the Fashionista variants. Dagon is Slash, so... Yeah, I think it would work fairly well. And Dagon isn't doing it himself either, I'm pretty sure. Unless you want to pull in units more, but... Yeah, he, he, it's an alright evolution. Uh, yeah, it's... It, 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 on someone else, it would probably be a really good evolution. But the problem is, is that the rest of Murataka's kit isn't strong enough for it. Um, I mean, carry adapt. Don't get us wrong. Yeah, carry <laughs> adapt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about that. It's a. Uh, at least his kit seems focused, so I can give him that. Like there are other kits yeah, out there so that just are just hex left and right. Focused on shit. I mean, shit. focus on shit exactly. <laughs> I mean, you're saying it's focused, but I, I see no focus here. I mean, he's. He, he buffs a, a, he buffs the team's damage, but he he buffs the team's defense, but it, at really ridiculous restrictions, and it honestly doesn't seem worth it. It's really not. Like, I appreciate that they gave him a very bad buff debuff because you know I was scrambling around to find debuffs, and you know Chano provided it at that time, that one time because he had freeze. But it's just. Like, he has the highest rate, that's cool, but the rest of his kit sucks too much to justify using him. Yeah. Yeah, and importantly, this is just for his 4 stars, so he's out there sometimes. Everyone laugh at Valentine's Borotaka and then call Boy Scout Borotaka instead. <laughs> it's kind of, I think we talked about this, but yeah, 4 star Moritaka might actually, might be better than 5 star of Valentine Moritaka now. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Valentine's Moritaka is still stuck with the uh, spiritual dog warrior. So unless they decide to give him a skill evolution of that, they probably won't. It's the uh, Moritaka Valentine is dead. The only Moritaka yeah. I know is Cam uh, Captain Moritaka. All right, I mean, he was already pretty bad anyway. But 
Wow. I can't believe Ara, Ara is recognizing Valent units finally. Hey, 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 I've, I've made my point clear about that. Incidentally, I mean, that they don't have that. to, but... I mean, yeah, I'm kind of expecting that, actually. <laughs> it's probably oh. talking about Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, what more could you expect? Anyway, uh, let's just move on to the next unit. Unfortunately, there's no comments to talk about. Uh, <laughs> I'll just go make a joke about it again. Uh, cue some sort of sad music. I mean, <laughs> you want to splice that in? <laughs> Maybe. I can, I guess. Alright, let's just continue. Uh, Ted Tomo's. Well, let's violin. <laughs> Alright, please continue with Tadatomo's evolution, Sakis. Okay, so uh, the way Tadatomo uh, originally worked was that he's just supposed to hit stuff, spam guts, and that's pretty much it. He spams guts. Uh, yeah, that's his main utility. And, and, and stays alive and just hits people for okay damage with let rage. Uh, <laughs> rage plus, I guess, after he got his two skill evolutions. On the same ability because it was so bad they needed to fix it twice um but uh then they improved his blood of the beast because uh fun fact uh tanatomo vanilla does not have spiritual dog warrior so but they had to fit it in somewhere so they gave him something about loyalty probably that's so awkward but we don't whatever i guess <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh he has a few uh interesting components uh i'll start with the uh the gust part uh, since that's kind of a standalone thing, it doesn't really interact with the rest. Uh, it actually works in the wall, though. But uh, he, when he attacks, he now applies guts to people around him, not himself. That's still only at twelve percent, twenty-four percent when leveled, because uh, that's on a separate skill. Uh, so it applies at a rate of forty percent to allies adjacent. Now uh, that is actually the highest rate uh, gut spam on attack or missing. Mm -hmm. um, well, tied for ice. That we have. Uh, yeah, tied. Um, the other few people who I found who could do it are uh, Christmas Pollux and Zao5, who do it at 30% rate when missing or attacking, respectively. Uh, well, not including Zao5's evolution, but that's only once face start. Um, and he has to uh, move to do that, I think. Yeah, so the unit you would for this. It, does, it doesn't need to move, actually. Oh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't move. Yes. Okay. Uh, the so, the what? The units you'd immediately prepare for Tidal Tomo for Guts, obviously, it would be Sal as well, as far as, uh, for obvious what, reasons. You want to spam Guts? <laughs> well, yeah. Big Guts spam. But, uh, I mean, it is a pretty nice feature if you can actually execute it well. Uh, uh, the person who has the, uh, uh, so Tidal Tomo is tied with uh, Valentine's Shino, who also has 40%. Uh, when attacking, he also gives guts to allies adjacent, uh, so I guess taken off his father. But um, Tadatomo has a wider range than Valentine Shino because uh, Tadatomo is magic and Shino is shot. So he has that going for him, and which is cool. And one thing that he has that like uh, both uh, Shino and Zhao doesn't have is being able to refreshly bestow guts, guts to self as well, which is, you know, is pretty important. I don't know why Zao can't yeah. really bestow it to himself, but this this is the one case where uh, you I would recommend Tatatama over Zao if you're playing uh, lengthy phases, because if you're playing like short phases, then Zao could have his like guaranteed uh, guts uh, on turn one of each phase up quick as often as possible. But if it's on lengthy phases, I would recommend Tatatama instead uh, for both maintenance of his team as well as himself. <clears throat> yeah, so he has a. Uh pretty neat support in the gut spam, uh, he pretty reliable at that. Since he's a fire unit, he can get prayer easily, <laughs> easily, uh, for a uh, proc rate, so that could be neat. Uh, he could get up to, what, he, if he gets playing concentration and prayer, that's 70%, and then skill seed 80%, so he could get pretty high if you really go for it. Uh, and since he's magic range, he'll always have plenty of chance to proc it. Um, but anyway, uh, so I'll move on to the burn part next, because the rest of the kit relies on it. Uh, when Tadatoma moves, he inflicts burn in a big 3x3 three three square in front of him, which is actually pretty massive. Uh, so like, imagine 
shot range left and right as well. Uh, it's at a pretty reliable rate of 90% skill seed bait. Uh, so that's nice to have. Uh, kind of sucks that he has to move to do it, but burn lasts a long time anyway. It lasts like five turns. Yeah, so move him so every, yeah, one every five turns. That's like not much of a second response thing. Uh, so when he attacks now, he applies Ember, which is a new buff specifically for Tadatomo currently. This is at 100% luckily, so none of the uh, no messing around. But um, when an enemy is under the effects of Ember, it checks if they are burned, and if they are burned, then it will inflict, what was it, 3,000 damage? Yeah, it was 3,000 damage. Yes, 3,000 damage for two turns, so that's quite a lot. Um, it, it, you know, it'll start adding up. Uh, we really are in the flat damage meta, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Although this, yeah. this would be more annoying for the player than the enemy, but that's yeah, probably the idea. Uh, yeah, that's probably the idea. I'm sure we'll get ambushed by some enemy later on. Um, Can't but... wait for that. Oh boy. Uh, so, so Ember's neat to have. Um, it's not like amazing by any means, but um, I'm since Tadatomo is since Tadatomo and his team is supposed to live for a long time anyway with gut spam, you know, Ember will probably add up pretty quickly. Um, oh. And then Tadatomo also got a, a bonus to burn damage, <laughs> including uh, Fafnir's stackable burn. But until we get someone who can apply stackable burns. Uh, that isn't relevant. Although there could be some neat synergy. Uh, anyway, uh, so he... Tadatomo well, he went from someone who's like this kind of selfish uh, guy who's supposed to live for a long time just spamming guts on himself and now he's like a uh, team support. He can uh, give guts to self uh, to allies constantly and he can also help out with uh, help allies with Burn, so anyone who has burn advantage like Zab. Uh, it's honestly actually quite weird because it seemed like his CS was pointed to a, a team support with the with the healing to to allies, but <laughs> only now he's getting something to actually support the team. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was like healing, wasn't I, it? No, no. You'd say pitiful amount of healing. Yeah, it's like what six hundred at max. So it's eight hundred at max, I guess. Wow. Um, <laughs> well, uh, I'm just gonna throw there that I'm excited again, just for not really the Emperor itself, but more, you know, the president and sets. I know the president has already been set, but uh, having something like Emperor kind of shows that uh, crappy debuffs like poison uh, might also be uh, improved by you know these conditional extra debuffs that happen on top. And I mean, they kind of already made poison more. Relevant with uh, Poison Shen Ong and Astroth and Arstate. Yeah, but that's like more in the reverse direction. If you have a debuff, then you get stronger. Uh, I'm talking about like yeah. making existing crappy debuffs actually stronger to inflict more damage on them. So. All right, uh, I forgot to mention Tadatomo's damage. So with the burn advantage, it isn't that significant. It's only a 1.6 modifier, but um, with uh, when an enemy is burned, he will do 2,021 damage. 22 rounded. Uh, if he has rage and they are burned, he will do 5,054. So, Amazing. yeah, not that great, but you know, you uh, take you take what you can get. Uh, he's not really, he's still not really built for dealing damage. His his main purpose right now is just spamming guts, honestly. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it's a it's a it's a pretty good purpose, I'd say. It's more uh, relevant. <laughs> Yeah, for once. And you can, of course, just ignore the burn stackables until they decide to make them actually stackable, which would be pretty good, but no, that's probably not happening. Uh, Alright, we'll just... Thank you for finishing Tarotoma. We'll just move on to the unfortunate other spiritual duck word. So, Yasuyori is a unit that received a skill evolution that does not much to say about. It basically makes him uh, reduce CP to the enemies that decide to hit him. And that is only replicated by one other unit so far, surprising the Beast Line. So is there like five units? So I'll just get up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, Yasuyori. If the, basically he gains an additional functionality where if you ever want to use slime for some cheesing method, then you could use Yasuyori instead. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yasuyori is probably a better idea because way higher stats and you know other benefits like. And you can actually hit harder. Anyway. Slime is still better! 
it still reduces more CP. And it's guaranteed on slime too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there might be use for slime just because of that. Uh, but basically, uh, whenever I use slime, I feel like the best way you can use them uh, is whenever you want to re re deny the charge of an enemy that is out of reach. Uh, or, I guess alternatively, where attacking the enemy is a really bad idea because then they'll get like a whole bunch of buffs or something. So letting them attack you instead with their regular attacks. Uh, in a firm, firm place where you won't hit them. Uh, and that's... I don't know, it, it's okay I guess as a function, but it doesn't... As a util... In, in consideration with the rest of this kit, it doesn't really synergize, I guess? It's nice to have, but it's just a different sort of game plan at that point. One being like, you know, protecting your backliner, and then this one just being denying charge all of a sudden, which is like, okay, I guess. I mean, I guess it helps, considering he's supposed to get hit, so... Eh, I guess. It, it's... It won't really deny very much CP is the issue, because 20 CP isn't much, all things considered. Uh, you might even hit, hit the enemy uh, more times to get their charge up, because, uh, you know, th their charge check is on their turn, right? Like, uh, but they reduce CP at the end of their turn. So if yeah. so if you, like, yeah. manage to hit them a number of times, like maybe f uh, four times, then they already have t 20 CP gained back up, even if, uh, for the next charge, even if you denied them the charge last time. It, it's a bit silly, but whatever. That's just something you have to play along with. This game just like, and also immune to possession for some reason. In the very least, that means you never have to reposition him. Uh, I think that that's, himself, but... that's a lore-related thing, but it's spoilers, I guess. Spoilers! Get out! <laughs> no, but yeah. It, it works out because he's always supposed to be defending it, and be kind of... Yeah, there's not much to say about it. Yeah, that's it. Alright, uh, next... 32% blessing. Wow! We don't talk about that. <laughs> We're just gonna say, it, it synergizes what he already does, being a, a frontline backliner defender. Yeah, uh, for, for some meaning of the word synergy. Yeah, and speaking of blessing synergy, we also have Tanatomo, who was a backline frontline or supporter, and now has improved blessing rates, which wow. And uh, well, not improved. It's a brand new blessing right in front of him, uh, for the square right in front when she receives damage when he receives damage. Sorry, and also now he has special advantage against all the the skill disabling debuffs as well as countdown and I mean the issue with this is you're not really gonna be stacking these in general no, you generally only want one uh, one skill disabler having more than one is generally redundant because their kits tend to be uh, designed around that one feature and besides Tanatomo himself there are no units that can inflict more than one of these abilities yeah so, so yeah I and I guess... The problem with these dam the, the, the stupid damage modifiers are completely useless for a number of reasons. Well, completely useless. But uh, Tanatomo damage is shit. Yeah, Tanatomo has a trash attack stat, uh, and you know Valiant isn't the best for attacking. Um, Tan neither Tanatomo nor Yasuori, since you know, are supposed to synergize with each other, neither of them can inflict skill lock or double lock, so I don't know what that's there for. Uh, oh. And 1.5x is a uh, atrocious mod, um, especially for someone with such a low attack stat. Um, I guess it makes Tanatomo's CS hit harder. Uh, yeah, at, that's one thing. I would write down the values, but I would have to look at my notes, so can you uh, read no, that yeah, I have the notes. Um, at, at Sacred Artifact level 1, Tanatomo's CS will inflict 5,281.7 damage, plus 4,000 from the flat damage, which comes first, so in total it's 9,281.7. It's okay. It's so okay, but it's... It's okay, but it's not... It's not great. It's, it's Basically, like, you won't be playing around uh, trying to stack these debuffs. It, it's, this skill evolution may as well not have existed. Honestly, this is something I mentioned in Rosagas before, but uh, this is obviously just a case of uh, they had in mind they wanted to give all the Hakenshi uh, evos before, but they wanted to also give them full kits uh, for these newer ones, so they did, uh, with the exception of these very trivial uh, uh, so-called evolutions. 
And basically, <laughs> basically uh, what you have is, is a case of, you know, a game developer releasing a game, except not all the content and uh, DLC locking the, the last bits, which is like, it's whatever. I mean, it's, it's not exactly like DLC, it's like DLC, but they pay you, what's so... the... <laughs> yes. Uh, anyways, let's, let's just move on from this. I do not want to stretch this out. And let's just talk about the actual... Uh, the actual something, I don't know, actual good skill evolution that's worth talking about. <laughs> yeah, everyone uh, gets at least one. Yeah, like yeah, but... yeah. okay, so this one, uh, Tyro Mighty now has the nice uh, privilege of being able to remove multiple uh, buffs from the enemy in uh, from a single square. And that's something that is, has not really been possible except with uh, on charges as well as with snow on the second turn of each phase. Uh, sorry, round time, time slip snow, as well as Takamaru. Uh, within slash and thrust range uh, for Christmas Takamaru. <laughs> Christmas, Mystic Christmas Takamaru, yes. Uh, the meme Takamaru. <laughs> <laughs> Taka meme Ru. <laughs> you jump the gun and go to the interesting part la first. Uh, but yeah, he's a. Uh, I tried using him, but it's not really. The... His range friend isn't too helpful, and the, the fact that you have to wait every three turns is not super helpful. So yeah, Ta Christmas Takamaru is able to remove. Uh, every single buff from the enemy, every three turns. And that's kind of a big factor between Snow and uh, Takamaru that makes them not as useful as Tyra Mighty in this case. You can remove it within the first turn, multiple buffs with it from a single unit. Uh, not even with combo. Up to three, actually. And uh, she removes three at a 20% rate, so she doesn't. there's no chance of her removing one or two. She will always remove three or remove none at all. Uh, which is nice for, and kind of plays with her role as I forgot, I'm pretty sure it plays with the role of being able to like look through illusions or whatever. Uh, anyways, she also has an increased protection rate when she is struck, which plays, uh, which obviously just enhances her role as a defender and for the rest of her teammates. And she also becomes a bit stronger with weakness at a guaranteed rate, kind of like Sukuyomi. And, well, almost guaranteed. Well, basically guaranteed, but yeah. And you'll see bait. And she, I guess she becomes theoretically a bit t tankier, which synergizes with her other fetch toolkit because of evasion before he's doing damage. Although that's not something you generally want to rely on. Charm. Yeah, so that plays with charm as well as with protection because she does want to get hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's. Yeah, those things are nice to have, I guess. Evasion's just a bonus. Protection is like. Being honest here, her original role as like a, a defender of her uh, the allies uh, is has been pretty much usurped jail for a better role of uh, being able to de deal more damage with the weakness, as well as more importantly, being able to remove multiple buffs from the enemy. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> and uh, I guess that suits her up to uh, especially have someone directly behind her who can uh, give her some protection for herself so that she can more safely uh, trigger more uh, trigger her uh, buffs after receiving damage more safely, as well as uh, being able to take advantage of weakness right after she strikes them. Because weakness, uh, keep in mind, lasts only for one turn. It's important that you take advantage with someone who's slotted after her and is also positioned behind her. But yeah, uh, uh, more importantly, and for more generally speaking, she'll she'll have, have more use for being able to remove three buffs in a single turn from a single square. Uh, actually, potentially up to six if you decide to give her a combo. So. Yeah. So yeah, that best that would even more if it's a giant enemy. Uh, I guess that'd be like so three, six, twenty-four. Three, so twenty-four. Uh, yes, no, it's three, six, nine, just oh. twelve. What the heck? <laughs> just <Yes>. twelve. <laughs> My mistake. Uh, two plus two is four minus one. That's three. <laughs> <Good class. laughs> okay. Okay. Um, um, it's a shame the weakness comes after or before removing buff because it, you know, Terramite doesn't get to take advantage of maybe the increased damage or you know, oh, reduced it, defenses. Why? It happens all at the same time. No. They're, they're all when Does attacking, it? right? They're all when attacking. That means yeah, they're, all they're, the calculations they're, they're, speed. they're all a when attacking, yeah. So that means no, all I mean, the calculations uh, for it happen. Like... She actually has decent attack for a force. Well, say they have two defensive buffs and she removes them. Does, she, does it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, 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 it's when attacking. No, so, no, they're all before the calculation period. Okay, uh, do you have the number written down or shall I read it out? I do have it, but you, sh you should read it out because, yeah, it will kill this uh, recording. 
Okay. Uh, when an enemy is inflicted with weakness from Taramite, she and uh, and she leaves them with no buffs, uh, defensive buffs. She will deal six thousand one hundred and six point five damage, which is you know a decent amount. Yeah, it's decent. Uh, just all by herself, too. It's pretty much guaranteed. And that's stress range, yeah. so give her. She's not really meant to be a buffer, so give her with an yeah. actual buffer, and that could uh, very well play out well. Or at least, or maybe even just a different damage deal altogether that's behind her and can take advantage of the weakness. Yeah, uh, so I think Taramite is pretty cool now. Uh, the two enemies that she hits, uh, assuming she procs her uh, buff clear, uh, they basically get completely shit on defensively and offensively. Uh, they get cursed, they get weakness, and they lose all, uh, well, lots of buffs. So, leaves them in a very poor position. Uh, yeah. yeah. And they kind of, uh, one of us, well, maybe not one of us, but like, I'm sure like uh, someone could take Tower Mighty in the challenge quest that's allowed for Fkari, uh, the third one, and just shit on the enemies because they all start with a bunch of defense buffs. Uh, I feel like someone already did that. Uh, yeah. Well, I'd like to see that, but I have not yet. <laughs> but uh, they kind of just held her out until the last second. She's perfectly suited for those kind of things where the enemy star was a bunch of. And she buffs. also can equip the shooting stars there. Ooh, mm, that makes her really good then. And it uh, suits her well. Oh, yeah, for that combo. <laughs> yeah. I guess you could also. Uh, can she equip the, any curse or weakness ARs? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't actually checked that far. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to actually look that up. But, um, but yeah, Tyre Mighty's got a good skill evo. Yeah, Definitely trust, one of the more interesting ones. And trust me, it's kind of like not worth uh, going for the setup that me, me and Irby were trying before, trying to make Valentine's Snow or Christmas Takamaru work with being able to remove all buffs every now and then. Having them being able to remove immediately on turn one is. Uh, yeah, you really want more important than you think. Yeah. But you didn't mention the best effect. No effect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that effect had no effect on me. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> that was just shit. I forgot saying it. That ends our discussion. Uh, sorry for the weird stream issues. I, I, maybe. Technical difficulties. I will just have to investigate it as usual. Um, I might have to get a new computer, but. I don't know, it seemed fine before, it's strange that it's doing that now. Maybe it really is just YouTube. Um, Hopefully it's just yeah, YouTube. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just a YouTube problem. I doubt you would have something, a problem like that. Uh, yeah. Anyways, I... Actually, this stream went pretty straight. Uh, not stream. Uh, this uh, recording went pretty smoothly, so there will probably be min minimal recording. I'll just work on uh, editing it now. Uh, thank you for joining us, people who are watching this recording <laughs> and not a stream. <laughs> Uh, it's not the same. <laughs> Alright, whatever. You can find Irby's channel at... The link in the description. <laughs> that you. will hopefully still be there. Yeah, it will. Yeah. And uh, Zagas, you... You can you can find his videos in... Nowhere. The Discord server. If you're nice enough. It, it feels in like a non-descript playlist that I may or may not make. Yes. Alright, thank you for joining us. I'm Arithan, and we are Sunny. And uh, thank you too for your patience.